It's time now to talk about a different kind of distance metric. And in particular, we're going to focus on the geodesic distance metric. With the Euclidean distance, as we've discussed, uh, in high dimensional feature spaces is not necessarily very uh, useful. We, we had that discussion about uh, the having uniform distributions of points within an N cube uh, and uh, and then asking what the distances are between those points. And as n starts to get high, the distances all essentially start to look the same. And, and this should make us feel pretty uncomfortable uh, it, in any scenario where we're using Euclidean distance either implicitly or explicitly in our learning algorithms. With geodesic distances, we're going to make the assumption that Euclidean distance is meaningful for uh, very short distances, but we're going to ignore uh, any anything larger than that. And this is going to end up like in locally linear uh, embedding, we're going to use this these uh, nearby points to define a, a neighborhood and and ultimately we're going to set up a, a graph of points in our original space. And then we're going to define the geodesic distance as the distance that we have to walk from one point to another along this graph. So let's look at this uh, graphically. All right, let's define an, a feature space here. So there's x0 and x1. And let's set up a, a set of points in our, say, our training set here. So in this particular case, one interesting question, we sort of see this in the Swiss roll uh, scenario, is uh, it's, it's pretty clear looking at the manifold, so the, that first dimension manifold sort of looks like it kind of falls along here. So in, in this scenario, it, it sort of makes sense that uh, these points would be nearby each other as well as uh, uh, this point to this point over here because they're running sort of along that manifold. But a real good question is what's the relationship of these two points here? Are those near to each other or are they very far from one another? One possibility is that because the manifold, the purple curve there, runs along a certain path and that this distance here between those two points or that path between those two points is not along that purple curve, then one possibility is for us to, to say no, and indeed those are, should not be near each other. And in fact, they should be very far away from each other. The idea with geodesic distances is that, is that we're, what we're going to do is define a, a graph over this set of points based on Euclidean distance. And, and what we're going to say is that uh, nearby points are connected to one another. So this point is connected here, this point is connected here, uh, et cetera. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a K nearest neighbors, but it, it could be defined in this way. So once we build this graph across all of the points in our space, what we do is we define a, a distance between any two points as the distance that it takes for us to walk along this graph in order to, uh, to traverse between them. So from, from this point here to this point here, that's just one traversal. So it's whatever that distance is. But if I'm asking the question of what is this point here, what's the distance from there to this point over here, that traversal is not going to go through the gap here, but instead is going to go all the way around uh, through the graph. And part of the uh, geodesic distance uh, measurement algorithm is to say, let's find the shortest path within this graph. So, so a long path could be to to take all of these outer ones here and then kind of pop around and go like this and then eventually get to there. That's, but that's not the shortest uh, possible path. Uh, a short path might, uh, might be uh, this path uh, here. 
that might be the shortest path there. So, so each link along that path, that's just the Euclidean distance. The distance of that link is the Euclidean distance. And the total distance along the path is just the sum over all of those uh, elements there. And when we define distance in this way, then the distance between these two points is actually quite large. And so what we're going to be able to do with this next algorithm, uh, it, is, it is called isomap, is, is that uh, we're going to define our distances uh, using this geodesic measure. And then we're going to ask multidimensional scaling to give us a new embedding that respects those distances. And in some sense, you can kind of think of taking this whole set of points and unwarping it into, in, in, into say, a one-dimensional manifold with just a little bit of variance uh, along the, the vertical there. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a little bit of code uh, for, uh, for using this. <clears throat> 